Okay, the first thing you need to put lights on the car is a car with a rack. It can be a, a dual rack like this, uh, with crossbars or no crossbars, it doesn't matter. It just needs to have the rack. That's the most important thing for putting Christmas lights on a car. The second thing you need is an inverter. You can have one like this. It takes two cords, plugs into your cigarette lighter. Uh, you can see right now, it's 150 watt max, and that's more than enough for LED lights. The third thing that you need, which I recommend, is at least a seven foot cord. This is just a regular light cord. And what you want to do is keep the male end, cut off the female end, bare the wires, take your cord from your Christmas lights, cut off the male end, and splice the two together with electrical tape. So this allows you to string this much cord through the vehicle and allow this much cord, light cord, on top of the rack. The LED lights you need that I find the best, that works the best, are the uh, LEDs C7 lights. Probably 50 per side, so 100 total. You can take them, tie them down with zip ties, real easy, just like this, and you're done. And you can cut off the excess when you're finished. Second thing I like to do is take this much cord, which will be in the cabin of the vehicle. The other thing you might need, or you will need, is a three-way that plugs into uh, an extension cord. One can be like this. And the extension cord, it just has to be long enough to go from the dash of your car to the back of your car. This one's a little long, but it's the one I had, so it's the one I use. <clears throat> the other thing you might need is a stool or ladder to get up to reach to the uh, top of the rack, the rack of the car. Go ahead and plug your inverter into the front of the car, the dash, because that's the one that's going to shut off when you shut the ignition off. If it doesn't shut off, you need to find another source. It's important that when you shut the ignition off that the inverter shuts off too. If it doesn't, make sure that you shut the inverter off. And the easiest way to do that is look in the back. It has an off-on switch right here. off on and that's something you'll have to do all the time if the if it doesn't shut your uh, inverter off when you shut the ignition off so what we'll want to do is we'll take the one extension cord and we'll want to snake it the male end first to the dash of the car and the reason we're doing this is because at the end of this cord we plug in our two-way or three-way or whatever adapter you have but we want to make sure that we can plug in two cords to the end of that adapter okay so now that you've got the extension cord going to the dash of the car plugged into the inverter you've got your three-way now you take your Christmas lights the light cords that you spliced you can plug them in here From there, you can try to be discreet as you can about the cord placement, but all you really want to do is make sure that you have the light cord going through the car door, the hatch, and don't be worried about this pinching because it's going to pinch against the rubber grommets or the, the gaskets of the car. Basically what you want to do is have your splice up here and your first Christmas lights starting at your rack. So. Once you get the cords lined up, the light cords lined up, back of the rack, all you want to do is take these cords, zip tie them down all the way to the end of the rack, 
and back and forth. So that's what we're going to be doing next. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken 50 lights and I've gone back and forth to the end of the rack that I can go, as far as I can go, and back. Zip tied it, back this way, zip tied it, back this way, zip tied it. So what, what you want to do, ideally, is you want to get all these lights as vertical as you can, because if you don't, what's going to happen is when you're driving, they're going to rattle in the car, and it's annoying. So you'll want to get the lights up. I know some of the colors are all matched together, and it looks a little odd, but at the end, when you turn the lights on, you won't even notice it. So basically, if you can get the lights to go vertical, and put a zip tie on them, that's the way you want to be, just like that. So you want to do this probably every uh, every 10 inches or so. Just keep zip, tie zip tying it until the lights stand up straight all the way down on both sides. And then uh, we'll trim the zip ties and we'll see what happens. Okay, so what I've done is I've run this row back and forth, back and forth, and I've added more zip ties. I know I said the zip ties should be every 10 inches. Sometimes they need to be more, maybe every four inches. It, it depends. You, you don't want a loose bundle. You want to make sure that the lights are secure. And the best way to do that is to add more zip ties. So if you see your lights flopping around like this, don't be afraid to put on another zip tie. It's easy, it's cheap. And uh, like I said, you want to make sure that the lights all stand up straight. You don't want them knocking down on your, on your paint of your car because that'll just rattle. It'll probably... I don't think it'll damage the car, but it'll be annoying when you're driving down the road. So lights are up, and don't worry about the colors all being together, because these are LEDs. The more you have together, the more vibrant the color is. So the idea is to make sure that they stand up straight, they're not flopping around, um, your cords are nice and tight. You can use a pair of these. All these are, are little end cutters. You can kind of grab a hold of them a little bit, make sure that the zip tie is tight. Um, and when you're done, you just cut off the zip tie. If you want to leave it, you can. It looks like little branches. It doesn't matter. But sometimes people want to cut these off. It's little exterior pieces. So the idea is, to, like I said, make sure that these are all nice and tight. The cords aren't flopping around. This thing is not going to come off going down the highway at 90 miles an hour. Sorry, 60. So everything's plugged in. Let's do a quick test. I'll put the key in the ignition. We'll see how this works. Keys in, lights come up. Keys out, lights go off. Putting the key in, see what happens. And that's what you should have. Vibrant lights. You can see the other side hasn't been done yet. It's uh, laying there all coiled up. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and finish, do one side at a time. And then uh, we'll take it for a road test, make sure there's no uh, bulbs knocking. These are outdoor lights. They can take the water, they can take the rain. There shouldn't be any issues. If there are, then it's probably an internal fuse. It won't damage the car, won't damage the lights. It's pretty easy going. I've been doing this for the last probably 10 years and LEDs have actually come a long ways. So it's a, it's a fun thing to do. Kids love it. My wife loves it. And uh, it is the season.